Hi there, I'm um, Black Bright and I've had a few people asking me about me and it's never really occurred to me that anybody would really want to know about me as an individual because I'm usually just here to offer services to other people. Anyway, I'll just tell you a brief introduction for those of you who want to know about me. Um, I started Black Bright, which is a magazine really, in 2005. I'd spent several years in America and when I came back the people here seemed to be a bit you know not lazy but you know they seem to just want to watch TV go to the supermarket come back watch Coronation Street all the soaps and I didn't feel as though they were doing anything but so what I did is I thought I'd start this magazine called Black Bright News and what it was meant to do it was supposed to inspire people to do stuff Anyway, because of the culture of black Brits or the culture of those who I was appealing to, um, it didn't, you know, nobody was really interested in the magazine. If I gave it out, they'd probably look at it. But I shouldn't say nobody was interested in it. It was a certain market that was interested in the magazine. Usually, say I'd say the middle class to upper class were interested in the magazine. But I was appealing to the working class, the ones who needed motivation, the one that needed to get on and do stuff and be inspired and motivated and not just lie, allow, lie around and feel demotivated by what's going on. I mean, I understand how that can happen. Anyway, um, my magazine, I've been doing it. I was doing it. I started off doing it every quarter. And then um, over the last couple of years, I've been doing it maybe twice a year. And I think um, last year I've just done one. I did one a couple of weeks ago, printed the hard copy and I've done that. But now it's really weird because I really wanted um, to do something that helped people. And what I found inadvertently by doing these videos is that while I'm still using Black Bright News and Black Bright News can actually document some of the information that I'm learning and teaching you, it's also shown me where my direction was supposed to go. And I've always been the type of person I didn't I've never liked to read. Well, I thought I didn't like to read. But I've always been curious about things. And I, when I was young, I wanted to be a lawyer and I never got a chance to be a lawyer for, through various, various decisions I made and poor choices. Anyway, putting that aside, what I found is that when those Jamaicans were deported and went to Jamaica and I realised that, the, that they didn't know what to do, and there was nobody to tell them about the law and how they could have avoided some of those deportations. I mean, I know that the way that the UK is structured these days, they're trying to make it for the rich, not just London, but England itself. So everything is geared around money. And God forbid you haven't got money to appeal your deportation. You're screwed. And but what I was hoping is that by giving information this way, those people who've got family who um, who are able to tell other people that might prevent or at least give people a chance to know what they can do or know what their options are. And so what happened out of that is that a series of things I started looking at immigration, I started looking at deportation, I started wondering why somebody would pay um, a lawyer 22000 to get her husband, to prevent her husband from going, being deported and he's still deported. I realised that people were exploiting people and I thought no this ain't right. Just because people do not understand legislation doesn't mean that they should be tricked and exploited. I said, it's not right. So what I decided to do, because I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people are disadvantaged through language, disadvantaged through literacy, disadvantaged in a lot of different ways. Some people just cannot deal with all of those complicated words and that are embedded in legislation. So even though I didn't know I was heading in that direction, this is where I am now. 
I'm at a place where I'm keen to help those in areas, not any area. I'm not really, I'm not a militant person. I'm not somebody who's going to go out there and advocate against racism and all that kind of stuff. I can't really be asked about that. There's plenty of people doing that. But where people are disadvantaged uh, through language or through not, not being able to understand legislation, that is where I think I'm useful. That is where I believe my talents lie. And that is what I enjoy doing. So that's where I am now. So now Black White the magazine has now become the vlog, the blogger. And I blog now more or less on a daily basis. Um, I don't push it. I'm not going to vlog just for vlogging sake, um, but I do need you to subscribe. I do need you to share. I do need you to support me. And I do need you to let people know how they can um, safeguard themselves from injustice. Like I said, a lot of times, uh, if you don't have the money and if you don't have the support, you're screwed because a lot of these situations depart the depend on people being able to appeal and I'm going to tell you about a situation in another video about a woman and what she went through totally totally legal uh, she was a visitor mind you coming into the country but yeah I'm going to tell you that in a different video but I just wanted to let you know a little bit about me um, I'm born in the UK Windrush child, Windrush generation. Um, I'm an artist, one of my paintings on the wall. I'm a poet, I'm an author, and I run the magazine and I work full time. Um, what else is there? Got two girls, and yeah. Yeah, that's it. Bye.